This is Donnie Tuttle from Southwestern Consulting's Sell Anywhere podcast. If you can sell anywhere, we can help you sell everywhere. We're the podcast for professionals and teams who don't quite fit into the traditional brick and mortar office structure. Helping you live a life of freedom and productivity, we believe that you truly can sell from anywhere. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, you are going to be really blown away by the guest we have today. Uh, Lauren LaForge is sitting across from me. This is like a live interview. Normally we do these things via the interwebs, but today I'm sitting on the boat. What is the boat? What's the name of this boat? Intrepid. I'm, I'm, we're sitting on the Intrepid Yes. with Lauren LaForge, who has been remote living and selling the lights out for over a decade. And so she's going to share with us some some tips and tricks and, and mindsets and methodology of what she does and how she does it. And uh, anyway, I just want to, Lauren, welcome to the show. Thanks, Donnie. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Like, what what, what is your what is your life? Who, who are you? What do you do? And give us a snapshot. Cool. So um, I am someone who got into sales young. I was recruited at 18 and uh, to sell, I actually sold with Southwestern, selling books back when I was in college. And after college, I wanted to travel during college as well. I did semester at sea and I studied abroad in Costa Rica and I learned Spanish. And so after college, I um, finished selling books. I learned my first year selling books. I was studying to be a teacher and I made as much money as a teacher starting salary that first summer selling. And I said, well, maybe I should go into something other than other than teaching. Um, and so for me, it became um, I knew I wanted to go into business and sales um, from there. And so um, after college, I went, I thankfully graduated debt free and I went down to South America uh, with a backpack and people laughed because they said, did you, you know, did you, you didn't even bring, you didn't go with anyone. I said, I didn't think about inviting anyone to come so with me. It was my trip. Backpacked alone. <laughs> so I backpacked alone to in South America for five months. I flew into Argentina and flew out of Colombia. And along the way, I met my husband um, at a hostel in Uruguay and um, he then traveled on the rest of the trip with me came back and uh, we we got married uh, so he's a souvenir of my trip <laughs> so he is this very entrepreneurial spirit and so our joke was that we were pinky in the brain that he would have the brain of ideas and I would be like oh yeah I could, we could do that and so we um, started and sold two companies over the course of uh, 10 years so one was a, a educational um, summer camp for students from uh, mainly from Europe who were coming to the states to learn English, uh, and so yeah, so I would I would go sell in Europe and knock on doors of academy language academies and schools and, and recruit. And our camps blew up. We had four locations, and um, so we were able to run and do set up most of it remote. And then we would be in the states usually for um, kind of six months to put them on, and then we um, we sold that and we built a a shuttle transportation company called the Hostel Hopper and it was all focused on hostel travelers and it was kind of our way to feel like we were traveling but we were being quote unquote responsible living in the states and uh, so I always say this was pre-Uber mm -hmm. and so we had GPS trackers on our vehicles and it was our slogan was it was faster than a bus but cheaper than a taxi which is kind of what Uber is and it said plus you get to meet cool locals and so our drivers you had to have you had to be a traveler if you wanted to be one of our drivers um, and you had to have a passion for, for people. And um, so, uh, yeah, so we, we grew that. It was really fun. And so that I was able to um, operate remotely. So I operated that from, from Bali, from, from Thailand, from South America, from Europe, from wherever we were. And um, we had an amazing staff as well. And our boat became our office. So we, that's, we bought our boat in that time. And um, our office manager was staying on our boat for a few weeks. So we were gone one time and she ended up meeting a guy and then they lived on on their boat about two docks over. And so our, our, our it was just really funny. So anyways, sold that and got into um, sales coaching and, and um, so tell, business yeah, coaching. So tell, tell me yeah. tell me about like give me a snapshot of, of what you do now and how you live life now because uh, and, and, and not just uh, I, I do want to hear the professional side, but also mm -hmm. the personal side. Like what's the what's the tie in? How are you guys uh, living? You've been married for how long? 11 years. 11 years. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, yeah, share a little bit about who are you now and what are you doing now? That's that's such a crazy past. Yeah. So um so yeah, so now I do um business and sales coaching and it's um 
phenomenal because it's, it's very similar with Southwestern Consulting. And, um, and so it's, it's, I'm grateful because it's a similar lifestyle that I kind of need to operate. If I had to go into an office, which I've, I've attempted in different parts of <laughs> my life, um, it doesn't last. I get bored usually two or three months in just of the monotony of the routine. Um, and so I really enjoy the flexibility of being able to sell from anywhere to anyone and um, that we can sell at, via the phone in person. I've um, you know, I've done, you know, trips to Ecuador and been in dude sales presentations in Spanish to Remax offices down there. Um, been able to, I remember one time I was in um, Cambodia doing a, a um, on, on vacation with family and it was 5 a.m. and I was doing a, a coaching session and my client said there was a big rooster in the background and it went off for the, you know, the morning rooster and she said no where are you i thought you were in la she was um from the midwest and and i said oh i i'm on a farm i i didn't know what to say i i laughed because i was trying to not <laughs> seem too irresponsible that i was uh coaching from cambodia but that stuff i love because then i could finish my quote unquote work day and then go see anchor watt and anchor tom and go on a rickshaw with my mom to you know um uh you know go to the crazy fish markets and and things like that in um in Siem Reap or in I love know, it. elephant tr- treks and you just kind of you can connect your work and your passion all in one so you're not missing out on life so you are a, you're, you're a sales coach Southwestern mm-hmm. Consulting great company mm-hmm. great people <laughs> <laughs> what um, in, in, in like can you describe a little bit of your just like your living situation how do, how do you how do you do that and then also your travel currently yeah. like, how, like what do you how do you do that Absolutely. And, so, and how you sell right, while that's all happening. Right. So um, I live a very untraditional lifestyle. I usually don't tell everyone everywhere where I'm going or where I just came from. But be- you're about to tell us. I'm about to yeah. tell you. All right. So I keep it under wraps simply because I crack up at the reaction because you, it is so counter culture, you could say, that um, it's kind of I, – I wouldn't say there's that analogy of um, – the the lobsters or or the crabs that are inside of a bucket and one crab tries to get out and the other crabs try to pull it back and not that I have people like that in my life but there is that I don't know that overall kind of reaction you get from people so I usually don't share with everyone so um but yeah this year uh alone I've I've been in um worked from Uruguay from South America I've worked from India and did the whole Taj Mahal and all that awesome stuff and the the Golden Triangle I've worked from I have to think where I've been. I've been Scotland, Iceland, the UK, uh, Amsterdam, in Holland, and Dominican Republic. So that's just been this this year. Okay. And um, uh, so lifestyle wise, I just I mean, do you want me to go into details? It's yeah, planning we, my we, schedule we, like, and all that. Well, we'll I want to get into that in a okay. moment. But like, just tell me, like, give me a snapshot. We're sitting. Um, this is your home, right? This, this is, is your my, floating. This is my LA apartment. LA apartment. Yep. Okay. The Intrepid. My, the Intrepid. Our our sailboat. Um. We are on the Intrepid. Woohoo! And, in Marina uh, del Rey, California. Marina del Rey. Right next to Venice Beach. California. Yeah. Beautiful Work. Venice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Tell me, uh, I'm really curious why. I mean, I know that this, it, did it just kind of sort of happen because you were, you just fell into unconventional living? Or is there like, is there just like, like some belief in life of like, this is why I want to be this way? That's a great question. Um, absolutely. So this goes back generations for my family. Um we, my uh, great grandparents, they came over from Scotland on a gigantic barge. Took them three months, and they came to uh, New Orleans, and then they, you know, moved to Florida. And he was an electrical engineer and helped to create, put in all the electricity in in Florida, in South Florida. And so, um, they continued to always travel by boat. And so they would, they have these epic adventures that they would go and they would literally, even when you could fly, they would still, they would pay for a, um, a room on like cargo ships. They would have rooms (laughs) for regular, for regular passengers as well. And so they would go, you know, there's, there's pictures. So there are these really short, adorable, um, Scottish 
couple and there's pictures of them and they kind of look like the gnomes from Travelocity because <laughs> there's pictures of them like in front of the pyramids in Egypt and there's pictures of them in, at St. Mark's Square in, in uh, Venice and um, just they, that's how they would travel and so it was just really fascinating so they would actually come in here when my mom was um, my mom grew up in, in Anaheim Santa Ana area near Disneyland mm-hmm. and so my mom remembers being you know like in high school and her grandparents would come in and go to um, Long Beach their large cargo boat would pull in and they, she would visit them and they'd you know hang out for a few days and then the ship would head off somewhere else so there that's part of th- three four i'm the fourth generation i guess of boat uh, travel and unconditional and un- unconventional type of living um and then beyond that even i um lots of lots of stories i've got aunts and uncles who live in australia um who went you know did contiki tours in europe when they were in so this was normal to you very and, and very you, normal and you so decided I'm, like this is just how it happens or, yeah i mean or was, and, yeah. did you see like where the where the masses are going you're like I'm not going that way. They're not happy, or this would make me happy. Like, is, was there any like? It, this is very innate. No, yeah, it's very really? not. Yeah, no, and it's um, yeah. So it's something that um, uh, I mean, as far as like n- not being happy, not necessarily looking at the masses, but I do remember. So I did um, semester. I did. I started traveling when I was in high school, but like I said, it's very common for my family. They kind of we have people who live in France, we have people who live in Spain. I mean, our family's everywhere, and so. With um, uh, so when I I first started traveling, when I was fifteen, uh, to Guatemala with a you know like a church um, mission trip, and with or actually it was with my school Spanish class. That's what it was, and then I went to Costa Rica a few years later, and that's where I really fell in love with Spanish language and culture, and that excitement of traveling. And of course, here we go to Mexico often. Uh, if you're from California, right, you do, and right. so. From there, um, when I was in college, I did my junior year, did semester at sea. So that's when you sail around the world on a cruise ship and you study at the same time. So you take courses and then you get to have a week free in, in the country. And so we circumnavigated the world and I did it with my twin sister, which was really cool. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And so then the next year I was back in San Diego where I went to college and I was just bored and just feeling, yeah, you know, just that, like un- um, uninspired I, I just un I, ugh, just and so I clearly remember it was probably December 10th and the semester was probably I, maybe it was November 30th and, and the <laughs> semester was ending in like two weeks and I went to the study abroad office I looked up online and and I said I, I need to go somewhere can I, where can I go to learn Spanish or to improve my Spanish and they had said uh don't go to Argentina because you'll you'll pick up an accent that's not it's like too strong of an accent. You should go to um, you could go to Costa Rica. You'll have a more neutral accent. So I said okay. So I signed up and was and I left probably um, I don't know a month later. So beginning of January I, I left, um, and that was really pivotal for me. Uh, living in Costa Rica, traveling there, and and becoming fluent in Spanish because then you know later on it helped me how long did, meet my husband. How long did it take you to become fluent in Spanish there? So um, yeah, I was there for five months. Five and, months. Yep. And then I had already studied in high school, but you know just sure. high school Spanish. Sure. So then yeah, living there five months with a host family, and of course you you know you end up dating the locals. That helps the, your language uh, right. capacity there. And then. Um, we, yeah, and then that next year is when I went to South America for my five month backpacking trek. So, um, that's a yeah. lot, Lauren. That's a <laughs> lot. So, um, so, so I'm curious, like, I guess back in the place where you were, uh, you said San Diego, uh-huh. where you're like, eh, and you realize, no, I need to keep moving. And when, when, like, this, the travel lifestyle for you, is it more about, is it the novelty of new things? Is it being around the, 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 the people? Like, what, what's the, what's the most interesting thing about a new location for you? Totally. And, and so I think it's pure that novelty and stim- just stimulation, like just ex- excitement of what I'm learning. Um, I really have this conviction that there are, I mean, there are literally millions of versions of life ex- happening at the exact same time. Uh, it probably goes along with a little bit of FOMO, that fear of missing out, that uh-huh. I, I want to experience all of it. And so for me, I feel like I'm doing myself and my, my you know, 100 years on this planet, I'm doing it a disservice by living one, only one version of life. So um, that's why, you know, I love that last week I was riding bikes in the, through the canals in, in Amsterdam and coaching from there. And the week before that, I was dancing salsa in, in Santo Domingo and, and having, giving myself permission to live lots of versions of, of life and, and wanting to be, life. yeah, wanting to be a, like a local. Um, so that's a, that is my, like, right. huge conviction. All yeah. right, pull, pull it out for me. I want to know, like, what's in here? What, what inspires Lauren? 
because this is about this is a part of your inspiration and just living a life inspired. What is that? If you could if you could put that, I didn't I didn't prepare you for this, but <laughs> if you could bottle it up and condense it, like what's what's inspirational? Is it the million versions of life, or how would you? What ins- what in- what's inspiring yeah, to what, me? What, inspi- what drives yeah. you? Because there, yeah. there are two things. There's your lifestyle, and there's also you are an extreme producer. Uh, not only at Southwestern Consulting where we work now, but but in, in other iterations of your life. Mm-hmm. What what inspires that? Um, I mean, one form I think is I'm very competitive and I love recognition. So that in the sales front, yeah, as long as you tap me into you know that kind of perfectionist. Mm-hmm. Uh, competitive spirit definitely comes up. I like to be uh, given the trophy or given the microphone. I mean, that that part definitely, and that's been throughout throughout life. Um, I remember even being in um, eighth grade at my middle school and doing. Um, we had to <laughs> to get extra credit. We would watch ep- you could watch episodes of Bill Nye the Science Guy and write reports. And so I remember I would turn in like ten a week, just wanting to be number one. And I was number one. I got to be the valedictorian. And we found this um, speech that I had done then, and it was all this mo- my first motivational speech to an, a speech to an audience when I was. 14, 13, and it was all about reaching, going for your stars and reaching your dreams, and it was just blew blew my socks off to, <laughs> to see that even at that age, this is all this is all innate. Yeah, we, we need an encore. We need. Yeah. To, we, let's, let's do it again. So um, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn the page and get into a place to where a lot of the people who are listening to this really want to know. And mm-hmm. so this is uh, you know we've we've heard some of the like 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 what you do. We, how do you do this? Like how what are some of the practical things that you have to do? That maybe if you were living in one of these rooms, you know, mm-hmm. behind us in the marina, you wouldn't necessarily have to do. Um, how, yeah. What are, what are those things? How do you do it? How do you make sure that you're still able to outperform other people? All right. I want you to hold that thought because I have a real quick message for the listeners, and then we're going to jump right into it. Hey, I hope you're really being sparked and challenged by the podcast. Listen, one thing I know is that every top player out there needs a good coach behind them. At Southwestern Consulting, we actually coach thousands of leaders and entrepreneurs and sales professionals to get to the next level while living a lifestyle by design. If you're curious about having a coach on your team and about what that might look like, just go check out donnytuttle.com and click on the link that says request a free call. That's DonnieTuttle.com. Yeah. So, I mean, this kind of stuff, it is really funny. And you do have those moments where you're, you're like, man, if, if someone could see me now, they would just, you know, crack up or be like, you're what? Where are you? Um, <laughs> so one big thing, I mean, one, you know, trick I've used, the best, quietest office you can have is um, a car. And so... Um, even when we're on the boat, if I've got a 6 or 7 a.m. Um, coaching session that we know with some clients on the East Coast and my husband's here asleep, then I'll go to the car and that's my that's my office. Um, I do lots of prospecting. If I have an in, even an in-person meeting, obviously, um, uh, I will – living in L.A., there's a lot of traffic. So if it's a poor time to drive or it's during my, my golden hours, I just – I work in the car. That's where I work. Um, and it's quiet. I turn I, – so I have a couple of tricks I have oh, yeah. is that I always – obviously keep the car on obviously so I can have air conditioning and I'm not I don't turn into a sweaty mess it also creates some you know gray noise um I've got a this thing called the power cup and it has what is um, the power cup the power cup you can um plug it into your cigarette lighter okay. and then you can also plug in your um like it has spots for the computer like my Computer oh, cord plug in. So you can plug everything in. I can plug everything in, right. and it's connected to my to my car. So the power yeah. cup, I travel with my power cup. I put it in my suitcase, and it goes with me because when I'm in other countries, so we're in Brazil for Carnival, and we, um, you know, rented a car, so we would go. So between coaching sessions, I would you know hop out and of our rental car and explore sand dunes and white sand beaches, and then I'd hop in and have and do do a couple of <laughs> coaching sessions or, or prospecting, and. Um, and so the, yeah, so that the power cup is key. So as long as yeah, if we're on the move, that's and then um, so the power cup and and um, cars are kind of your best bet, I guess, just for wow. like a quiet, focused, concentrated okay. space. At least that's for me. The power cup and cars. <laughs> that's interesting. So and then and in terms of um, 
uh, like, is there any, any anything? Do you have any lap type things you're putting things on, and your or is your laptop just on your on your lap? Are you like, in the passenger seat when you're doing oh, this? You're like, what's the like? Um, how? Yeah, usually the passenger seat, and I slide it all the way back. So yeah, I just make okay. it, I make it comfortable. And then I always, um, uh, especially when we're renting, you know, Airbnbs or hotels, my um, I'm willing to spend a little more to make sure that I'm in a um, <laughs> that I'm in a um, a spot with a beautiful view. And so I was in um, Prague last year and I had this, you know, just stunning, stunning balcony view over the castle and the, just the entire um, a city it was kind of up on this hill. And it was awesome because that was a day that I had, you know, maybe eight or nine, you know, hours of work, focus, concentrated. And so I, I choose to be very responsible. When I'm working, I'm working. And when I'm not, I'm not. If I'm in a beautiful place, I want to make sure I've got a stunning view so I feel like I'm still there, even though right, I'm working. Even though you're working. So I don't – it's very rare for me to travel just – I mean, take off um, a week or two for vacation. That's very strange for me. I'm constant. I'm always kind right. of doing both. Right. So you're, you're – there, there's – you're living in a place in between. You're not really on vacation. You're, yeah. you're just living a life that's something you yeah, love, right? Yeah, that I can click on for work. And thankfully, I love, love, love what I do. Some days, it's funny. I'll get off. I'll I'll be having kind of like a so-so day maybe at a, um, a place. You know, sometimes you travel and things go wrong. Um, you know, it's raining or you you could, you could have maybe lost something. Who knows, right? Frustrations can happen on a trip. And, um, and then I'll get into, all of a sudden I get into my coaching calls and my, I'm there. I'm in that person's office with them in my mind. And it's funny because it'll, it can actually sometimes just even improve days because um, I kind of get into, that, into my work zone. So, I yeah. love it. Take me, take me to your mindset uh, because um, <laughs> many people that, that I've, I've spoken to, they go to a place where they were in a, um, uh, I, I guess, an environment to where there was an expected, you know, certain things happen. You're in a work environment, certain things just happen. And then all of a sudden they unplug from that uh -huh. and they have all this freedom. And now they're like, I, the phrase I use is it's hard to do anything when you can do everything. Ah. Right. And so there's, there's, there's this crazy freedom. You're, you're a driven prospector. How do you, like, what do you do to keep your mindset engaged? And you said, when I'm working, I'm working. And when I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not. How do you, how do you do that? How do you stay sharp there? Yeah. Um, the two, you kind of had two questions there together. So yeah. the first question you were talking about was, um, how do you, um, oh gosh, now I blanked down the first one. It's the mindset. Yeah, it was, it's, it's the mindset. The, yeah. That mindset. And oh, what, how can you, when you can do any, everything, how right. do you choose? And so um, one thing I did, a big um, book that's been just motivational and, and moving in my life, and I know it's been for lots of people, is uh, Jen Sincero, You're a Badass. And um, she, I read it probably three years ago. It's it's here in my bag. I travel with it. I call it, it's kind of like my little miniature um, uh, life Bible. And it um, in it, she just talks about getting really clear on what do you want. And so I just created a list of these are all the things that make me excited, focused, happy in, in my zone. And mm -hmm. so I think that sometimes helps when you have your clear gui guidelines for you of like what makes you happy. Like so you have a list. Now what do you do yeah. with it? Then what? We make sure you implement it. And okay. so something like I love to dance, love to dance. And so I make sure when I'm in countries and when I'm in the States that I'm intentionally adding going dancing into my lifestyle. When before I used to put um, pressure on myself that, oh, no, you can only do that when you're on vacation and you need to be responsible and, um, you know, kind of for force myself just to work, eat, breathe, sleep and just do that over again. And so right. this when you kind of have that clear list of like these are the things that make me feel alive. We make sure we add those in. Lauren, I love it because here's the, there's so many people and you can pull up any podcast and look at all of the stuff that people are, they have out there and it's always about the grind, the grind, the mm. grind. Mm. And, and what you just now said is like, no, eat dessert first, right? Or just Plan your eat, fun stuff, eat right? Eat dessert, yeah. Right? <laughs> eat dessert. You, it's, not, it's not about be responsible and do all of these things and then maybe if you're a good girl, good boy, you can get right. to this thing at the end. You're like, no plan this because it should be a part of you it's in your absolutely. dna absolutely and i clearly remember and actually i so i journal a lot it's a big by brain process of mine to kind of start my morning and and i remember um reading i was in um in uruguay so we go there often we go every christmas and new year's for um to be with my husband's family and, and it's stunning and beautiful and i remember being there and thinking oh 
you know, I shouldn't go to Carnival. This was uh, two, two or three years ago. I, I shouldn't go. That's irresponsible of me. I should go back to the States. I should just do workshops. I should keep selling. I shouldn't. This is, this is irresponsible for me to go and spend all this money going to Brazil. I haven't earned it yet. And then I sat and I looked at that and I was like, how did I not earn this? I've been I've been working my tail off, head you know, head down. Like, in some things, I feel like we're constantly putting the res- we, we have to earn it because of our results. And it's just important to say like I'm earning it because of my activity and because of my focus and my drive. And all these months I've been on, yes, I have permission to go work, work and 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 travel and enjoy yeah. Brazil. Let's let's take the load off that other that, that we would. We think other people put it on us, but really we put we it put on, on ourselves. ourselves. Right? Oh yeah, and 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 give ourselves permission. Mm-hmm. Give ourselves permission to enjoy. Yeah, enjoy life. That's yeah. awesome. So it was this huge, and I remember even my sales manager, um, Ron Alford, and we always laugh because I say, you know. Well, Ron, I just, I figured you would say X, Y, and Z. And he said, I didn't say that. And <laughs> and so he laughs that I often, um, I'll put my own judgment of myself. Him, right? I couldn't, <clears throat> I give it Ron's voice. And, and he laughs, he's like, he's like, Lauren, you can, you can do whatever you want. I trust you. And, and um, so that, that's huge. And um, so that for me, that I remember clearly um, that, that trip to Brazil, because it was kind of a pivotal kind of give myself permission trip. And or choosing, saying, telling myself, you did earn this, enjoy it. Um, and I remember we actually found out that you could dance in the Sampodromo and buy the costumes and be a part of the um, the, the group. And so we did that. And I remember turning oh, and hey. turning the thing and all the you know millions of people in the stands and and dancing down this this thing in our in our our awesome hilarious costumes and <laughs> and it was just this moment of like this is awesome, you know. And that those are. Those are moments that you cannot, money cannot give you. You have to choose to go have them. And um, another pivotal moment for me was, um, was my husband and I did, I mean, eight, ages ago, 10, 11 years ago, 10 years ago, we took uh, three months traveling in Italy. And I remember being in, um, where were we? We were in, um, uh, oh gosh, n- near, I'm, I'm going to blank out. Anyways, near Rome. And there was this tour bus and the, all these old, you know, like 70, 80-year-olds. Um, sorry if you're 70. Watch this. <laughs> but 80-year-olds, people with, with lockers. And we're getting out of this tour bus. And we were, we just looked at each other and, and we said, I'm so glad we're seeing this now. Now, right. Like, oh, my gosh, how sad. We're like, well, this is probably their bucket list. And here they have, you know, a few years left. And hopefully they can walk enough to go and see all the sights. And they're probably right. going to get tired early. And, and you're dancing. And we're dancing. Right. Or we're, we're on a Vespa right. going down the Amalfi Coast. And and it's there's um, it's just you can have such a different version of it. So just uh, another, sorry, r- ramble, but another pivotal book for me was The 4-Hour Work Week, which it is yes, for so for many people. Well, yes. And um, But I remember reading that like 10 years ago. And, and um uh, and just you know that idea of you know, you know what do you want choosing now? Yeah. Yeah. yeah choosing to have many retirements throughout your life and throughout your year and not forcing yourself to be the old man in the red convertible so right yeah. right oh wow that's so powerful yeah so powerful and who gets to say what's important we do hmm. right who gets to say what we do with our time we do. And we put it on these invisible Rons. Like you uh-huh. had this, this image of, of Ron saying these things. And the truth yeah. is there's no one really saying those things. Yeah. It's us condemning ourselves or judging ourselves or whatever. And but those are the things that I like. we should break free from. Mm. So I, I love that you've done that. Now, I'm, <coughs> excuse me. We're in we're in your boat. I want to, like, just looking at the practical part, just real briefly. Yeah. Minimalism. Totally. How does, like, like was, is that hard for you? Or has that just always been a way of life? Or... Do you do you sometimes contrast that when you're near others who maybe have a bunch of other things? Like describe that part because we yeah. this is where we're at as well. Everything yeah. we own fits into two vehicles. Uh-huh. You know nothing else. Basically the clothes on our back. Well, how do you how do you do that? And did you was it a process or has it just always been that way for you? It's kind of always been that way. Um, we you know. I don't know if this is an excuse or, but being from in Southern California, it's you don't really think quickly like, oh, and then I'm gonna buy a house. You know, I mean, obviously a lot of people do; they're awesome. Right. But where I live, the average house starts at uh, 1.2 million, and so it's you know it's just a different market. And so um, on one side, I think I have never accumulated all the stuff. I've right. never done the big furniture buying for my four bedroom home um, because I never had a four bedroom home. So so there's a that's one big part of it. But even our apartment in Santa 
Barbara, we laughed because we outfitted. I think when we first outfitted, because we, we, you know, we didn't, we, we came from, we were in down in Uruguay previously. And so we, I think we spent $300 outfitting this apartment <laughs> from, you know, the free tables on Craigslist to the $30 couch that someone was giving away to, um, you know, yeah, just you name it. And so, um, so, you know, we've, we've slowly, uh, you know, swapped things out and, and upgraded them, but we just don't see the point. Like, it's just the things we'd rather spend our money on travel. Right. The experience. So, um, so, so tell me this, can you, can you, is there, when we do these things, I've, I've heard someone say that an adventure is not an adventure until something goes wrong. <laughs> so I'm wondering if maybe you could take us to a place where something, uh, th this isn't always just sunshine and lollipops, right? Right. right. And, uh, can you, can you take us to a place to where, um, to where it, maybe it was difficult, like it was like your worst moment. Can you remember a worst moment or most difficult moment in this Ooh. whole process? Oh man, I'm sh you in on an adventure or just try just, selling. Just, just just selling and living this lifestyle. It could be it could be mm. you know. Worst case. Oh, I remember this one. I was so pissed. So, I don't know why this trip. It was just this one trip to Brazil. I don't know why it keeps coming up, but I guess it was just a pivotal trip. But I remember we got in and. We got a SIM. I always buy a local SIM card. Every time I land, I get it at the airport. So you get a local number. And it's usually a lot cheaper just to be doing kind of Skype calls with your 4G from your local SIM card. And so I got my local SIM. And we put it in the phone. And for some reason, it wouldn't work. And we found you're supposed to have this code. You're supposed to do all this different stuff. And I had this huge... Um, call with the president of this huge food and beverage company like it was like all set up and it was this big deal that um that I'd kind of done a, a training for one of their branches and then I got passed along to the big wig and here I had horrible so I tried to call oh, him no. like on my regular on my phone and it went into this and that oh, and that no. it was the worst and it just like bombed because the whole thing was kind of in and out and <laughs> I I could never got him back on a call again and I just remember feeling just feeling irresponsible, feeling like a failure, like that emotion. And, um, but then at the same time, you know, it's like when you, I, you know, after that happened, I now never schedule big calls or I try to not schedule really anything the day that I arrive just so that I can make sure I have time to get my stuff set up, making sure that everything works correctly. So landing, taking a two hour bus and then checking into the hotel and then having a, an important call was not the best lineup because I didn't create room for error. So, so. always have that cushion for adjustment then everywhere. Yeah, to make sure you can test everything so that you, you do get to work like a professional and you're not the, you know, yeah. Any quick tips you can give us on everything from outlet type stuff you carry to to phones and sim cards to how do you travel on airplanes uh -huh. and and these different things anything that you've learned that you like any like ninja tricks you can you can yeah, share with us yeah it's always good ninja tricks so one is the inflatable neck um neck cushion uh-huh why why get the big one when you can get one that's cool up to it and then you yep. blow it up when you need it so that's a huge one um i use tylenol pm when i travel that's kind of my um, <laughs> drug of choice just to relax my drug muscles i just take a half one i'm, I'm not a consumer of, of drugs but i uh, i dig a half bite of it and it'll just relax me enough to really knock out on long trips uh, my husband will laugh because we ever have a, like a layover in between a long trip and i've had i've had one I, i'm just kind of like a, the Showing noodle out. the noodle on <laughs> On the floor <laughs> sleeping um he always hopes that no one will steal me or our <laughs> stuff but um it's all good and then um outlets uh yeah just making sure you've got all the right converters you know in, in india i remember i didn't have um a car charger and it was like a six hour drive i was going on and then that you know it's kind of the opposite schedule so i kind of would travel by day and then work by night right and um and so i didn't have my phone had died or was dying and I didn't have a car charger like the little um outlet thing I didn't have the power cup because I wasn't I wasn't renting a car on this trip and so um so that was uh something that I made the guy pull over and try to find it so I try to have like all versions of plugging things in because my even my adapter wasn't useful if I didn't have the car adapter part of it so just I mean funny stuff like that is really key Good stuff. And then when you pack, do you have multiple bags or you try to get everything in one one thing? Do you? Yeah. No, I, I try to do put everything into a carry on. Um, I hate checking luggage. I have I knock on wood. I've never have luggage lost. So I'm I 
I help avert that by always having my carry on. Carry on. Yep. Um, so yes, it's that and, and a, a backpack and a, and a purse. So that's how I travel. Yeah, love it. And then uh, finally, like if like there are so many people that are looking, like maybe they just read the four hour work week, or or they're they're looking to make the change, or they're yeah. in the middle of that. Like, how, like anything that you could you would say that would encourage, or the, what what would you say to someone who's maybe looking to transition, or they, they that's on their heart to do? Anything you do to, to, to cheer them on, spur them on, or give them any advice? To... Absolutely. I mean, uh, two big things. One, of course, is just do it. You know, just just give yourself permission. Just tell yourself, like, I, I can. This is my one life on this planet. How do I want to live it? So that's just huge. If that's on your heart, like, just do it. Just don't, I mean, quiet the noise. And you don't have to announce it to everyone. Just just do it. I, I um, if Everyone jokes. I don't really use social media. I don't, I like to just be where I am and I know unless a client asks where are you today Lauren they they don't know where I am and it's it's fine and I was near the royal wedding when that happened and one client said how was the wedding and I went huh and he had talked to a colleague who knew I was in the UK and we so we laughed and <laughs> so um uh, yeah, so that's just, just do it. you know, just do it. And then the second thing of advice, which is also from uh, Jen Sincero's book. So if you haven't read You're a Badass, read that. And um, and she says, what makes you jealous? What makes you jealous of others? And if it, recognize that that jealousy that you have is actually an indication of what you want. Ooh. And so I clearly remember that I was on an airplane going down to Uruguay, and there was a guy, and he was going on this business trip to Brazil that his company was paying for him to fly to Brazil. And I was like, oh, I want companies to pay me to fly to Brazil. Like, what? And um, and so just that importance of, you know, and, and now I've got a lifestyle where I'm creating that for myself. And so just the importance of um, – recognize if you're jealous about this and others if you're jealous listening to me share all this then that means it's an indication of you want this in your life and so so do it do it as well find a way well lauren the forge you are the most responsible <laughs> sell anywhere selling sales coach i've ever met right here on board the intrepid it's been yeah. so much fun to talk with you i think we're gonna have to do this again because like there's so many things i want to dig into and ask but we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and close this one up thank you so much for joining yeah. us how can people find you and get in touch with you if uh you know if they want to hear more about your story or if they you know maybe they're interested in coaching because they're like this lady this is who I want to talk to. How do, how do they do that? Absolutely. Um, uh, gosh, the I guess I, I don't know all the handles, but I'm, I'm on. You can find me on Facebook just as Lauren LaForge. And then LinkedIn really is my best way of finding me. So LinkedIn. And you have LinkedIn. a website? Lauren I do have LaForge, a website. Lauren LaForge, Yep. Com. Yep. And yeah. Awesome. Hey, thanks so much. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure, Donnie T. And um, yeah, I think it's awesome you're, you're given the opportunity for messages and stories like mine to be shared to, to those who want to do this themselves. So it's, it's awesome. Thanks for doing this. Hey, thank you so much for joining us today on the Sell Anywhere podcast. I really hope that we've equipped you and motivated you to be able to sell no matter where you are. Remember, your talent is not limited to your zip code. And if you can sell anywhere, you can sell everywhere. Hey, if you've enjoyed this, share it with a friend. Rate us on iTunes. We certainly would love a, a good five-star rating. And if you know anyone that you think should get involved, or if you would like some more content like this, just go to Donnie Tuttle, SWC.com. That's Donnie Tuttle, SWC.com. And we will catch you next time.